Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks. Welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and birthday boy meteorologist, DT from Weatherist.com, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's time to talk about weather, which happens to be my favorite topic of all time next to baseball. Probably even more than baseball, I should say. Baseball number two. And lots to talk about in this edition. First, we'll be talking about weather this February from hell, and that's what it is, H-E double toothpicks for winter weather lovers, eastern United States going to continue. No sign of it breaking down here. Uh, there is some talk and speculation that March is going to turn colder over the eastern U.S. I do not see that happening very much. It could be a little cooler. It won't be as warm as it has been, but uh, not really a cold March here for the eastern half of the country, what I can see. And we'll get into that. Massive snowstorm likely coming up here uh, next weekend for the Midwest. Uh, some su possible, some severe weather. Uh, strong thunderstorms for the Ohio Valley and the East Coast on the 25th as well. And then also, the pattern does turn colder for March, but not favorable for any late season eastern U.S. winter storms. So we'll get into all of this. First, let's take a look at the overall pattern last 90 days. As you can see here, that deep persistent trough um, over the West Coast. Let me highlight, you can see the feature right here. There's your dark blue. And the jet stream is coming down from Alaska and around this feature and, of course, up in this direction. So the eastern third of the country remains mild. The west coast continues to get hammered. And, of course, we saw that all last week. And a new storm hitting them in the next 24 hours. So very, very active pattern for those guys. And this is the last 30 days. Pattern has not changed at all. Now, this is as of January 26th, mid-February, obviously, we know the last two weeks it has not changed at all with all these monster systems hitting the west coast and the wet Rockies and the western third of the country. If we take a look at our uh, precipitation last two weeks, we can see that the west coast and the Rockies have been absolutely hammered with precipitation. That's some pretty good rains in Texas and Oklahoma early last week. Much of the central plains, the upper Midwest, is pretty dry, and it's been fairly dry over the southeastern states, but just in the last two weeks. Before that, you go back to January, there's some pretty good moisture in some of these areas. And if you look at our temperature as well, pff, everybody's been warm. I mean, look at the, that red is, remember, that's 9 to 12 degrees, some areas 15 degrees Fahrenheit above normal over the past two weeks, especially a large area of 9 to 12 degrees. Now, relative to normal, of course, the anomalies are strongest over the Midwest. But even in Virginia, as you can see, North Carolina, West Virginia, a lot of areas 6 to 9 degrees above normal. Even today, this is at the record high temperatures for the 19th of February. Look at all these warm temperatures. Wow. I mean, super warm in the Midwest. Some in the Mid-Atlantic, but really the Midwest. And one of the reasons why is because of our old friend, yes, the QBO from hell. Q B O. And of course, oh no, for this is bad news for winter weather lovers. Now, uh, this here is the equator right here. Okay, so there's your equator, and the, and the QBO is centered right along the equator. So this is now, uh, this goes back to early November. You can see this is November 5th, and this is as of the February 15th. So I have about two months' worth of data. Now, the, remember, this green stuff is around right around here, around 15, plus 15. Now, earlier back here at the in, uh, in late December, it was on the yellow, which is plus 16, a little higher. So there was a brief surge where some of these lower readings got up into here, as you can see, um, at the end of uh, January. But then this uh, green stuff, which, which is plus 12, fell backwards down to here. And now we're back up to plus 14 again. So we're still around plus 14 at the QBO as we head into February. And that means the QBO is very, very slow to break down here from what I can see. And the reason why you mention that is because we're heading into March. And since we'll assume that the QBO is going to stay uh, plus 10 or greater, if you look at all those uh, marches where you had a QBO of plus 10 or greater right in here, you'll see these analogs, and this is what the temperatures look like. All the cold is up here in Canada, not a lot in the U.S. A lot of places close to normal, but uh, very, very cold in Canada and uh, warmer than normal over Texas. And if we look at a precipitation map, pretty wet on the east coast and the upper midwest and still super strong storms continuing to batter the west coast a little drier than normal over texas and oklahoma 
Now let's take a look at this pattern. Now this is February 17th. Let's look at the data here. Uh, this is the 17th. This is the first big system to hit California and Southern California coming in here. Now there's our upper level low here. Uh, this is the remains of the New England snowstorm still sitting up in this way. But you can see there's absolutely no ridging here. The flow is just very zonal, very Pacific oriented. And that was the big system hitting the west coast. Now, this is it's moved inland. This is as of the Sunday morning. You can see that. And um, we continue to see the next system coming down the pike right here. That's the one that's going to hit tomorrow. And you can see the general flow is, again, like this and like this. There's no mechanism for any of the cold air to come southward, just all Pacific air. If we look at our temperature anomalies for the next five days, wow, that's pretty impressive. Uh, for late February. I mean, Illinois, Wisconsin, 20 degrees above normal. Even in Virginia, about 10 to 15 degrees. Kentucky, 15 degrees above normal. Ohio, 15 degrees. Mm -mm -mm. Rainfall, the monster system coming into California, and specifically San Fran, uh, just south of Oakland. A lot of rain here coming in the next 72 hours, and the Sierras are going to get absolutely crushed with huge snowstorms again. And this is the rainfall relative to normal. And you can see if you take a look at the area right in here, that's 354% uh, above normal. Now, pretty dry over Los L.A., but they don't really need the rain. Then more above normal stuff up in here and more above normal stuff up in that area. All right, let's take a look now. This is as of Monday afternoon. So the previous system that hit California on the 17th is this system here now. Okay. That's the one they hit several days ago. And this is the new one coming in uh, over the next uh, 24 hours, slamming Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. Now, what happens is we go further out in time. That system comes out of the uh, Northern California, Pacific Northwest, and it drops down a little bit here. And we get this double area of low pressure forming. And then we got a weak front situated like this. Now, here's our high pressure area. So everyone... We're super warm, another warm day for much of the eastern third of the country for the next week, five, six days. So this is all super warm all up in here, but this is your cold air up in here. So what's going to happen is this low pressure area is going to go right in this direction. You'll see it in a second. Now here's the European model. You can see it has a major snowstorm already forming right up in here. And there's your low. We have the cold front running like this. So, and there's your big high. Look how warm it is. Wow, it's just southwest winds, west winds, very impressive warmth. This is the GFS taking the system through Kansas into Missouri. Here's the European doing it 12 hours later, but the same sort of thing. And again, you can see a huge snowstorm in all of this area. As you can see, there's your snow line. So, western Iowa is getting slammed, southern Minnesota is getting slammed, Nebraska, Wyoming getting slammed. A lot of rain up in here, and this is the potential for severe weather in this area here bringing in tons of moisture in that direction and this is the year this is the gfs doing the same sort of thing has the low going south of chicago the previous image had it north of chicago so it's going to be some uncertainty with regard to that and then the european finally takes it up into the michigan and again you can see more hum humongous snows back into southern minnesota uh, northern iowa wisconsin just up in this area there's your cold front coming in this direction with some storms and again strong southerly winds a lot of inflow coming in there from the gulf and from the southwest atlantic in terms of snowstorms this is the gfs this is as of sunday afternoon the 12z run you can see major snowstorm here and this here is the european so the pretties are pretty similar uh now obviously the uh, gfs has got a little more snow in wisconsin down in here and uh, the, the European has more snow up in this area. But the overall sense, it's pretty similar. They're still going to be working out as we get closer to the event here. And then finally, now this is, sat this is a Saturday morning. Now, the low itself is way up here in Canada. And the cold front is sweeping down this direction. So a lot, you can see a lot of rain and thunderstorms in here. And this is Saturday morning. We're getting southwest winds here. A lot of this for the East Coast, for in terms of any severe weather, is going to depend on the timing. If it comes through in the afternoon, this could be a decent cold front with some strong thunderstorms. If it comes through in the morning, it'll just be regular rain, maybe a rumble or two of thunder. Now, the European has the system, the front coming through on the East Coast, you know, from Boston down to Raleigh, Saturday afternoon on the 25th. So there could be some decent thunderstorms with it, especially if we get any sort of sunshine. 
in terms of the lifted index giving an idea this is from the uh, GFS from the uh, pivotal weather website you can see that here on uh, this is a Friday afternoon you can see the lifted index is here you see this orange up in here that's around minus four well minus five minus six something like that so that's a decent lifted index for February. It's not great, but it's not terrible. And this is the same sort of thing. Now, this is the morning of the Saturday morning on the, from, again, the uh, GFS. And then if we look at a Saturday afternoon, you can see Southeast Virginia, East and North Carolina getting around minus six lifted indexes. So it's got some potential. Meanwhile, the temperature is unbelievable. Again, here's your trough on the West Coast. There's the cold air, and here's the warm air no change this that qbo and howling pacific jet will not give up the ghost and if we look at the six to ten day on the gfs same sort of thing not much different here's 11 to 15 day does it look any different no it's the same sort of thing and this is taking us now into the first several days of march and again there's impressive cold air don't i mean let's be clear about this there's a lot of cold air up in this area folks waiting to come down the question is can it come down in this pattern let's look again this is look at all the cold air up in this area very impressive but can it come down there's no sign of that happening at all and this pattern i doubt it very much and let's take a look at this is the gfs at 150 hours now this is the system coming through on the weekend the low is in that was here this is for the one on the uh, 24th and 25th and here's the next system coming in here Look, another deep West Coast California trough. Yawn. What a surprise. Not. And it moves into the southwestern states, and it wants to develop into another system. Now, the GFS on Sunday afternoon develops another monster snowstorm, or Midwest rain and snowstorm. It'd be snow in this area here, rain down up in here, but you can see the low going right through Iowa again, and another system back in here. So it looks pretty impressive. Meanwhile, the eastern United States is warm, it's warm, it's warm, and deep south. Now, here's the GFS showing the snowstorm. In more detail, the second event, this is for the 27th, and you can see that it produces a major snowstorm for Minnesota, northwest Iowa, southern South Dakota, much of Nebraska. The problem is that the GFS ensembles don't support that. As you can see, this is a much, much weaker system. And the other one here, this is just a weak cold front, something like that. Here's your high. Okay, getting southwest wind. So it might be wet, but it's certainly not a monster storm like the GFS is showing. And this is the European ensembles, again, showing just essentially a uh, stalled front. Slow-moving front with waves of low pressure along it. it. may be a wet system, may have a lot of precipitation with it, but it's not a major event and it doesn't look to be a major snowstorm. As we go further on in time, this is a 240-hour uh, European ensemble. And we can see the uh, EPO, the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, is negative. The PNA is negative. Both of these features here on the uh, west coast, you can see that. Uh, this big omega ridge feature right here, the omega ridge right here, means that the EPO, as you can see, is going to be uh, negative, and so is the PNA is going to be negative. And the Arctic Oscillation is neutral, as you can see, and the NAO is positive with this big uh, negative anomaly here over Greenland. And of course, the southeast ridge is very, very strong. You can see this right here. The southeast ridge let me call it up right here very impressive now as you go further out in time this is 240 hours of gfs the same sort of thing again the ridge is way not on the west coast at all people make this mistake they think this ridge is here it's not it's over by alaska and that produces a negative anomaly here you know so here again this is a, a positive epo and it's uh, either neutral or, or negative pna and that's just not what you need to get the cold air. And look at your polar vortex. It's way the hell up here, folks. That's not a good sign either. If you want cold weather in the eastern United States. This is March 2nd. And again, the GFS is not showing much of a change. The trough remains over the western U.S. At 360 hours out, we are seeing a little bit of a change here now. Finally, maybe, we're beginning to see some positive anomalies in Greenland. The Arctic Oscillation has gone negative. The NAO has gone negative. The EPO is going neutral, and so is the PNA because the Omega Ridge is going back in this direction. So maybe, of course, this is March 6th, so maybe mid-March might, might see a little colder, but not 
much before that. And in fact, if we look at the European weeklies from last week, we can see this takes us out to March 9th. But again, we need to point out here, look where the polar vortex is. It's way the hell up in here, folks. So yeah, you've got a nice ridge coming down this way. But until as long as that vortex is sitting up in here, you're not going to get a major plunge of cold air. And we can see that with the temperature anomalies. Sure, this is cold. Let's get excited. It's cold. For Canada? <laughs> but not here. I mean, this is cold in the Midwest. Not in Virginia, not in New England, not in the Deep South. Well, the heart of the cold air stays up in this area because the bowl of vortex is too far north. That's really been a problem all winter long. And the same sort of problem here at uh, this takes us to the middle of March. And again, you can see look, where all the where is all the cold air? It's here. That's Canada. That's not the US. I mean, it's, it's seasonal temperatures in the Midwest and New England, but no reason to be excited about this at all. Anyway, that's this week in weather. I hope to bring you some more good news later on for some potential colder temperatures for mid-March. But like I said, you know, if you look at all the QBOs here for the month of March, where your QBO is in plus 10, it has been very bad for winter weather lovers over the eastern half of the country for the entire month of March. This is Meteorologist DET. I'll see you on the Facebook page.